Okay, hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to host this webinar. Uh, this will be our first in the Dutch region. Uh, this is going to be very exciting. Uh, we presenting today. We have Kodran. He's a solution architect, a senior solution architect, who works in Amsterdam. And take it away. Hope you guys have a nice talk. Thanks, Telly. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining this uh, webinar. Um, today, uh, we are going to talk about the Kubernetes CI CD for the enterprise. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to yeah, give you, let's say, a story about where we came from, um, not, let's say, back, back in the, uh, the days, uh, let's say, 20, 30 years ago uh, from, uh, from the IT industry, at least, let's say, uh, eight, nine years ago, where we were all busy also with uh, software development. And um, a lot of things has changed uh, over time, right? So I'm going to talk about that uh, and also what we uh, provide with, uh, with Jenkins X specifically for being able to do CI CD more in an automated way uh, running on top of uh, Kubernetes. So my name is Koya van Ballegooyen. I'm uh, based in uh, Amsterdam as uh, as Telly already mentioned. Uh, I'm a solutions architect. Uh, as you can see, although it's, uh, it's a black and white picture, uh, I have had really, uh, let's say, that's a, what, what my senior came from with my Swedish blonde hair. Um, so I'm working at CloudBees um, as part of the uh, sales organization, helping out and advising uh, our customers with all CloudBees related topics. And as you can see here, uh, I love really the uh, software industry. I've been in the software industry for a lot of years um, and uh, yeah as, as you see here I'm dreaming for riding a, a Harley uh, and in fact this is a Harley of one of my colleagues uh, in Spain uh, he was using uh, uh, the same picture for his uh, webinar and I thought it was nice and I have my driver's license but I don't have a motorcycle so hopefully I can uh, borrow uh, the uh, Harley from him uh, once so thanks so as I mentioned, let's let's go back a little bit. Uh, let's say a couple of years back. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is a, a picture from uh, from Microsoft. Um, this is, for example, uh, a whiteboard where they draw um, for a customer uh, the whole DevOps journey with respect to a specific uh, application. And as you can see, there are so many moving parts here. Uh, we are talking about uh, development, uh, setting up a development environment with all the necessary uh, prerequisites to do software delivery um, in the end for creating an application. Um, that's not enough, right? So typically you will have a staging uh, environment as well to test, for example, your, uh, your application. And moreover, um, most of the time you also have a separate uh, performance and load and stress test uh, environment which is hopefully similar to the production environment and you can argue if you really need to have a, a performance load test uh, maybe it's better to uh, also utilize the production uh, system once in a while for for those kind of uh, uh, tests um, because that's the real production environment but as you can see here you're replicating a lot of uh, components from each environment, uh, from development to staging, to tests and to production. And as you can see here, uh, um, a lot of um, yeah, processes are around it to make sure everything is uh, done in a proper way. Everything is done based on the best practices, based on the organizational uh, structure of uh, the company and using all the tools uh, which helps you to uh, to automate uh, these uh, all, all these steps to deliver in the end the application um, to to production. So I think after a couple of years we were really into let's say more or less automating these kind of processes for more from a CI/CD perspective. So. Um, this is, let's say, uh, a simplified view of uh, the previous picture, uh, but I think everybody's aware of automating your 
software delivery process by using pipelines. So pipelines is more or less uh, a way of visualizing your software delivery process in such a way that you can automate it as well. So here you can see uh, from a build perspective, we are checking out code. Um, you are comp compile the code, you do some unit tests, you build, for example, an image, you publish the image, and then it goes to QA. And then somebody else is going to deploy the application on the QA environment, do some functional tests, uh, probably as part of uh, regulations, you might uh, want to do some security scanning as well, do some quality standards uh, checking, and if everything is okay, you promote the image to, to a staging environment. And within staging, uh, obviously you do the same deployment again, because you have to deploy it on the staging environment. Uh, there you're going to do the validation of the, uh, of the application of, or the code, which was committed by, uh, by the developer. And then if, if everything is tested and validated uh, successfully, you're going to promote the image to production and uh, the business or your customers can, can use the new build functionality as part of the application. So it's really about automating the, uh, the experience from the developer's perspective, but also from the operations perspective to leverage uh, pipelines to automate your whole software delivery process. I would argue the, what I mentioned in the beginning, um, we are seeing a, really a shift from the traditional waterfall de development to agile. That's uh, something we have seen, but also the technology used behind your uh, software, software applications is completely changed. So the whole playground has changed over time. So let's say a long time ago, we were using mainframe and then it was a client server. And then we went to in, more into the internet uh, uh, model, um, which was really great to uh, simplify also the operation side more in the central uh, central way. Uh, then we got the uh, service oriented uh, architecture to, to really more like I have a loosely coupled uh, architecture. And now we are more into the microservice architecture for setting up your your software applications based on that uh, specific architecture, but also utilizing the underlying infrastructure and that has changed as well. So as I mentioned, I start, we started with the mainframe, we started uh, uh, to, uh, to move the client server to the internet. And uh, I would say around what is five, six years ago, um, uh, the, the whole uh, Docker, uh, containers came around. And before that, we had, of course, the virtual machines. So it really has changed our landscape, uh, infrastructure landscape, where we are running our applications. And obviously, uh, and not forget to mention that one, of course, the whole cloud movement. Uh, I see with a, within a lot of customers, they are moving completely to the cloud. So they don't have a data center anymore. So uh, they moved away from having their own data center to have really a cloud-only cloud strategy for running their application, their business-critical applications, uh, running on top of uh, technology, as you can see here. And that's what we have done as well from, from a Jenkins and Jenkins X perspective, and especially also from a CloudBeast perspective. So we really embraced all these... Uh, Great technologies to simplify your uh, deployment, to simplify also the CI CD um, uh, processes around your whole software delivery uh, or software process uh, development uh, process. So, we are utilizing, for example, Docker. So, Docker came around, as I mentioned, five, five, around five years ago. Um, that really took off, uh, I would say, especially from a development perspective in the beginning. Um, it was really simple to use. It was really quick to test your application inside of, of an image. And uh, it also simplified the whole uh, deployment because you can actually build the image and actually send that same image to a test environment, as I, as I discussed in the beginning. Uh, so from a test, you want to promote the image to staging and then 
uh, if all, everything is checked, you want to promote the image to, uh, to production. Um, that's what we uh, used in the beginning as well. Um, so everybody was using uh, Docker, uh, Docker containers, which was really great, especially you know, say on your development machine. But it got a little bit more complicated when you moved over to more uh, into the uh, into the server environment or in the cloud environment. So uh, you need to have, uh, let's say, if you want to run containers at scale, you need to have what they call what we call uh, an orchestrator. And the orchestrator that's in the middle here, that's the Kubernetes. So to be able to um, leverage uh, all those Docker containers uh, and deploy those Docker containers and manage those Docker do containers, you need to have some sort of orchestrator. So you need to have um, Kubernetes to be able to orchestrate or another orchestrator, but Kubernetes is the de facto standard nowadays for orchestrating your containers. Uh, where you can actually uh, make sure that the underlying infrastructure is uh, giving you all the capabilities you need for running your application, which is really important, right? So, for example, if you have, let's say, an e-commerce shop in the, on the internet, you want to make sure that the internet shop is always available. So, if something is wrong, it should be uh, automatically um, start a new uh, image uh, and, and up and running uh, without notifying or without actually the customer know, uh, knowing that something was wrong in the back. Um, so that's where you really need to have the, uh, the orchestrator, in this case, uh, Kubernetes, for being able to have that uh, uh, infrastructure underneath uh, your application. Um, the other thing we, we, saw, we saw is um, also the deployment uh, need to have some uh, some standards. So, um, for example, you need to have uh, a package manager. Uh, one of the de facto standards as part of uh, Kubernetes is Helm. So, to be able to package your your application and be able to deploy that package to uh, to a Kubernetes uh, service. The other thing which is really important for containerization and CI/CD is APIification. Uh, so making sure that everything is available through an API. Uh, that also counts for, for Kubernetes itself. Everything you do within Kubernetes is actually done through an API. And we will s uh, show you some of those uh, APIs as well, utilizing uh, our commands. Um, and the other thing is really important is also infrastructure as code. So not only your code will be part of your version control, uh, system, but also your infrastructure as code. So you have a repeatable way of setting up your infrastructure for setting up your nodes, for setting up uh, your underlying structure, which uh, is needed for running your application. And the other thing I, I would say is really important is to be cloud agnostic. So uh, as you probably aware of, you can run Kubernetes in your own data center if you want to, uh, but as you have seen, uh, there are a lot of uh, public cloud providers like uh, Azure from Microsoft, uh, GKE from Google, uh, you have PKS from Pivotal, um, IBM has its own uh, cloud uh, Kubernetes service, Oracle um, has its own uh, uh, Kubernetes service, uh, Amazon, of course, with EKS. Um, so all the main cloud providers provides uh, our customers and and also your organization uh, Kubernetes, which can be run in the cloud. Some of them, like uh, um, like um, Google with GKE and also Azure, I believe AWS is working as well on it to have also the same uh, infrastructure of Kubernetes service available uh, on premise. So you might have, let's say, a really business critical application or Due to regulations, you want to have it uh, locally. You can run the same Kubernetes service on your own data uh, data center if that's uh, if that's really required, or if you can run it on the cloud, you can utilize the cloud for that. But I think it's uh, really important to uh, to be cloud agnostic uh, from uh, from an, uh, a CI/CD perspective. So what, what is that about with uh, Kubernetes and Jenkins? So as you all know, CloudBees is the enterprise Jenkins uh, uh, company. 
So we are the kind of number one sponsor of uh, everything what we do with Jenkins in the, in the open source community. And on top of that, we also provide uh, some extra uh, functionality or capabilities on top of the open source version uh, regarding uh, CloudBees uh, specific uh, solutions. Um, so what we do with, with Jenkins uh, and especially with CICD on top of Kubernetes, uh, we are working in the community as well. So Kubernetes is open source. Uh, Jenkins is open source. We are working on both ends to really make, let's say, uh, make Jenkins a, fir a first class citizen of, uh, of Kubernetes. And, and the reason we, we, we took also the, uh, the, the, the Kubernetes, uh, uh, let's say, uh, train uh, is because really it's the de facto standard, as I mentioned, about uh, the, um, the, 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 the containers orchestration, uh, which uh, gives you uh, the scalability, as you can see here. So actually without actually knowing, so you are really busy with your application, you can leverage the scalability of the Kubernetes uh, underlying infrastructure. And um, if you say there should be, let's say three instances of your application up and running always, Kubernetes will make sure that there are always three instances up and running, which is really key um, for let's say the uh, developer, because he doesn't really have to uh, take care of those kind of uh, uh, functionality because that's already provided by uh, Kubernetes. So, which makes it more simple to uh, to really focus on your application and uh, to uh, to be, to go to be go faster, right? So the 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 developer wants to go faster. He wants to. Uh, build the functionality which is needed by the business or by their customers uh, quickly instead of being uh, able to or being busy with uh, let's say more or less the infrastructure which is not let's say the task of, uh, of a good developer. Uh, the other thing uh, with respect to Kubernetes is really about the high availability as I just mentioned. So it provides you a standard way of orchestrating all your containers and making sure that your application is always up and running. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is the abstraction of your infrastructure. So from a developer's perspective, you are talking to the API of Kubernetes and you are able to utilize those APIs or utilize other tooling which are using the same APIs to really leverage the, uh, the infrastructure the way you want. Uh, but you're really interacting with the API and not really busy with all kinds of, uh, let's say, nitty gritty uh, details of uh, the underlying platform. And what Jenkins brings to the table in the uh, CI CD space, as we all know, is obviously the, uh, the flexibility. Um, so uh, everybody knows Jenkins about uh, how flexible it is to set it up uh, the way you want it to set it up and the way you want to use it. Uh, I've seen a lot of customers using uh, Jenkins in, in really a, a very, a very distinct way. So there are so, so many use cases which are used within Jenkins to to automate uh, their all the, the the whole CI/CD and the whole software delivery process. So the other thing we we added it was uh, the uh, pipeline as code. So everything as 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 I mentioned already with the infrastructure as code. Everything should be part of your uh, repository, your version control repository. The same applies for your pipeline. So everything should be in the version control. So you are easy able to see changes over time, why it's not working now uh, compared to it works last week. Everything is traceable, everything is auditable. So you can leverage uh, that capability from the version control system to really be able to uh, to see what, what changes happened uh, over time. But of course, Kubernetes is, uh, I would say, um, it's hard to use. Uh, there are some, uh, let's say, from Kelsey Hightower, one of uh, the uh, Google uh, um, evangelists. Um, he can also be, uh, yeah, Kubernetes is the hard way, for example, to set up your the Kubernetes cluster uh, from, from scratch, which is not, let's say, a done deal. Uh, or it's very simple, um, it can be very complex, right? So you're really talking about setting up the whole infrastructure for being able to run your application 
uh, within a container on top of Kubernetes, and that can be really hard. And of course, obviously, we we have uh, developers, but we also have operations. So if you take a look at where we have to think about, we have to think about context. Uh, so the uh, the Kubernetes context uh, within the uh, Kubernetes environment. We have we have to think about role-based access control. Uh, we have to think about namespaces, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are a lot of things we need to take care of to be able to uh, set up Kubernetes uh, the right way. Um, and obviously, of course, if you are using uh, one of those uh, cloud, uh, um, the big uh, cloud providers, again like Azure like uh, uh, AWS, um, like Google, um, those, are, uh, those are already having setting up uh, Kubernetes uh, the right way because they are providing Kubernetes, Kubernetes as a service. So that helps you already a lot. And uh, I think, uh, and I see from a lot of customers that they are moving away from leveraging uh, their own data center and uh, moving away from uh, the data center to uh, move to the cloud to really get, let's say, the benefit of utilizing the cloud. They, they want to use it, so like uh, pay as you go, and uh, make sure that you you are able to use Kubernetes, for example, without having all the necessary uh, knowledge uh, in house uh, available. Because yeah, it's not easy, right? Uh, but nevertheless, I I think that's uh, that's uh, unknown to everybody. Um, and that's where, where Jenkins really comes into play. So, as I mentioned, Kubernetes can be really hard. Um, uh, for example, just setting up a cluster, it's not, let's say, a done deal. Um, you, you really have to take care of a lot of stuff. And uh, what we do with uh, Jenkins is really make it easy for developers, but also for operations to set up um, uh, Kubernetes the right, in, in the right way. Um, so if you take a look at uh, the uh, differences between Jenkins and Jenkins X, uh, Jenkins is really, uh, you get, let's say, something which is really flexible to set up. Uh, Jenkins X took another approach. And I think uh, I've seen it from a lot of customers. They ask us, okay, how, how do I need to do it? So what are your best practices? And, that's actually the, the approach Jenkins is uh, taking, um, who actually took, which provides you, let's say, the best practices from our side, uh, leveraging all the, the different tools, the different technologies within the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. And uh, we, we made a choice. Uh, but of course, if you don't like the choice, of course, you can uh, remove it and, and replace it with something else. Uh, but it really um, uh, gives you a simple way, for example, for setting up uh, a Kubernetes cluster. But that's only one one of the capabilities. Not that's of course, obviously that's not the only thing to uh, to leverage from a Jenkins X perspective. It's really about uh, having a CI/CD, an automated CI/CD process created by Jenkins X. So. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, and we have seen that in the beginning, with, the, with the, also with the DevOps uh, journey, but also with the uh, CI/CD pipelines, you need to take you need to take care of a lot of steps, right? Um, you need to uh, check the code, for example, do a code review. You you might when you build something or compile something, you create it, for example, with a jar file. You create a jar file, and you need to put that jar file, for example, in a repository. So um, that repository should be there. Um, that's something you need to set up, right? So if you do it on your own, you need to set up, uh, for example, Jenkins, you need to set up uh, a repository like Artifactory from JFrog or Nexus from Sonotype. Uh, but you need to set it up. That's one thing, but you also have to connect those, uh, those uh, components together. So, Initially, you need to you need to do a lot of uh, plumbing, I would say, to be able to leverage all those specific components, and that's where Jenkins X also uh, gives you, uh, let's say, the capability of automating those kind of components 
tie those components together and make sure you have an end-to-end -end software delivery process um, you, utilizing our best practices to be able to really focusing on having the developer uh, or helping the developer go faster and add value to their customers or for example the, the business units they are working for or just or or the customers from the company uh, to get their application quite quickly with new functionality they wish so they have specific requirements and the developers are making those uh, require uh, making those capabilities available in the application you want to have those capabilities quickly available to the end user and that's where uh, Jenkins X really comes into play. So to to dive a little bit into it, so we are more or less a wrapper around Kubernetes. And as you can see here, we are utilizing a lot of uh, components like a Git uh, repository, uh, could be BibDucket as well. Um, we are utilizing obviously Kubernetes. Uh, so we are using Nexus, for example. We are using Helm and Chart Museum for storing your uh, home chart. Uh, obviously, we're also using Docker, uh, all kinds of uh, components which are part of Jenkins X. It's actually behind the scene. So everything is open source. So you can go to the open source community, you can see the source code. Um, but in the end, a developer doesn't really have to know all these components because those are actually created uh, and used automatically by uh, by you when you are using uh, Jenga 6. So we have extended Kubernetes in this case with uh, what we call the uh, CRDs, which are the custom resource definitions. So we are utilizing, for example, environments. So we have, uh, um, let's say, um, name call or yeah, a component called environment. So we added that as a part of a custom resource definition. Same applies for releases for teams, et cetera, as you can see here. So we are utilizing for an automated CI CD uh, for uh, cloud native applications uh, running on Kubernetes that will be done by, uh, by Jenkins X utilizing all those components as you can see here on the slide. A little bit more into the uh, details. Uh, so from a cloud native architecture, um, so here you can see we have a Git provider, so that could be GitHub or GitHub Enterprise, uh, could be Bitbucket or uh, other uh, Git-based uh, servers. Um, we have also a Jenkins API, so um, it's obvious that um, not only Kubernetes providing you an, uh, you an API, but we are leveraging the Kubernetes API as well. And that's why I said we are wrapper around Kubernetes to facilitate all the extra bits we we created to, uh, for example, to create a Kubernetes cluster, to create uh, a, a, a cloud native application. Uh, we are using our own API, which runs on top of the uh, Kubernetes API. And as you can see here, we are really utilizing also the uh, the environments as we have seen in the beginning. So uh, by default, you will have a staging environment, we have a production environment, and obviously you can also add your own uh, custom environments if, if, if needed. So you can add your own QA environment, for example, you can have your performance load test environment as well as, as, as a specific environment. And obviously we have some pipeline activity available uh, or running, uh, and that will be locked on the disk uh, storage. Um, furthermore, I think it's important to know that we are utilizing Helm. So for the Helm charts, uh, for packaging your application and, uh, and store it into the uh, image uh, registry, uh, that will be uh, utilized by uh, Jenkins X. So at the moment, we have a command line interface. So that's the JX command I will show you later on. And we have also a user interface, which we are building uh, from a, from a cloud BCS perspective. So we have a one command to rule them all, uh, as you can see here. So based on what you're going to do, so like a, a JX create cluster, you need to uh, mention what kind of provider you're going to use. So in this case, it will be uh, Google's uh, GTE, so Google Kubernetes uh, Service. And uh, you can have a lot of, uh, um, yeah, let's say 
parameters like what kind of specific components you're going to use. So for example, we, uh, we are able to utilize uh, static Jenkins, uh, but nowadays a lot of customers are also asking for serverless uh, uh, Jenkins. It is something we are working on as well. Uh, so utilizing specific components um, before uh, it was uh, called Knative, and uh, now it moved over more to to Prow, to really u utilizing uh, Kubernetes native way of uh, doing CI CD, and that's what we leverage with uh, Django Six as well. Um, if you already have uh, um, a cluster available, so Kubernetes uh, a cluster available, uh, yeah, you're not able to let's say use create cluster because the cluster is already there, but you can also use Jenkins X uh, install. So JX install will actually leverage uh, your current cluster. Uh, of course, depending on how you set it up, we also have a compliance check. So you are able to check whether your uh, environment is uh, able to, um, to utilize uh, Jenkins X. Uh, maybe you have some uh, security constraints, etc. but that will be checked before before you can do the uh, JX install. And there are some other, uh, of course, uh, uh, commands to, uh, to check uh, and to execute on top of your Kubernetes cluster. But I will show you a little bit in the demo. Um, a little bit about infrastructure as code, uh, but also uh, about uh, the uh, GitOps, uh, GitOps environments. So as I mentioned, uh, and also from the, uh, the, the beginning, uh, we showed you the DevOps journey. So typically you will have multiple environments and how are you able to promote your um, application from one environment to another environment. Um, that's something we can do manually, but also automatically. So depending on your requirements, you can actually um, promote your application from development to test uh, automatically if, if needed or from test to QA etc and in the end to production and you might have a manual step before it ends to uh, or before it promotes to uh, to production obviously so you can actually really automate uh, all the promotions from one environment to another that's one thing but really having also all the environment specific variables and specific settings are uh, stored in git in a git repository so git is really in this case the source of truth where all, all the information around your environments are stored and making sure you can do uh, infrastructure as code uh, with GitOps, uh, but also promoting your application from one environment to another, either manually or automatically. Um, a little bit about next generation pipelines. Um, as you might have heard, uh, we, uh, as CloudBees, started with uh, the, uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation, CDF Foundation, which is part of the Linux uh, Foundation. Let me see if you, if you go to this site. Uh, site, we have the uh, CD Foundation. Uh, so uh, as part of this foundation, there are uh, several product, uh, projects already part of this, uh, for the, uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, like Jenkins, but also Jenkins X and uh, Spinnaker and Tecton. And Tecton is really one of the, the new kids on the block. I think uh, the, a couple of months ago, it started really started uh, to have more like a, a standardized way of setting up your pipelines, uh, CI CD pipelines on, on top of uh, Kubernetes. So it's really a Kubernetes native way of running your pipelines uh, on top of uh, Kubernetes. Um, so those projects are now part of the uh, CD Foundation. Uh, so I would say take a look at this uh, this website and uh, and stay tuned for more. Uh, probably there will be more uh, projects uh, joining this uh, foundation. And um, yeah, we are really happy to have uh, Jenkins and Jenkins X as part of this uh, this uh, standardized uh, uh, foundation to really. Um, setting up a standardized uh, environment for CI, CD on top of Kubernetes. Um, so this is the, the Tecton uh, based solution uh, from, uh, as I mentioned, you can use utilize Jenkins X uh, 
using uh, static Jenkins. So that means uh, Jenkins will be up and running. Uh, Jenkins master will, will be up and running for running your uh, pipelines. But we're also working on uh, the Jenkins serverless uh, way of uh, running your pipelines. And that's utilizing the uh, TechBOM uh, uh, project, as you can see here. So I'm not going to into those really details of how it works. You can look at it. Uh, you can go to the uh, Jenkins X uh, website. Um, let me. If... So here, sorry. So here we have the concepts of the uh, Jenkins X, and um, you can go to the architecture. And here you see the whole architecture of uh, of Jenkins X, and uh, with all the uh, necessary uh, explanation about how how it works. What kind of uh, components are we using when you're using Prow, for example? Uh, how it utilized uh, Tecton, uh, how to utilize the uh, Nexus repository, Docker repository, and also the Helm chart uh, uh, registry with the uh, chart museum. So I would say take a look at uh, Jenkins-X.io uh, and uh, look for the architecture, and you get the whole explanation of, uh, of the Jenkins X uh, environment. So another thing we are adding as well is creating steps uh, utilizing uh, the JX command, uh, which gives you the ability to create a YAML file quite uh, really easy. Uh, it's more like a wizard style, as you can see here. So you, you just say JX uh, create step, and you're able to uh, create a, a pipeline, which will be saved into a YAML file. Uh, a YAML file is nice to, uh, or everything is done uh, within Kubernetes is done through uh, YAML files. Um, YAML files is, has a downside of having the, the in, indentation, uh, which might be an issue. So uh, for a lot of people using, uh, utilizing, I don't, I don't know, their text editor of their choice, uh, but I would say, um, Utilizing, let's say, JX create step, it will actually create that uh, that pipeline automatically for you with all the right indentation uh, for uh, for your uh, YAML file. So no issues with uh, with the indentation. Um, we are also able to extend uh, the Jenkins X uh, command line interface experience. So um, we and everybody can work on that. Uh, you can create your own add-on if you want to. So we have add-ons already available for, for example, UI management. I think most of the time people want to you utilize the uh, command line interface, uh, especially from an operations perspective, uh, probably also from a developer uh, perspective. But uh, I think there's always two camps in this case. So there are people who really like uh, command line interfaces. They can script, script everything uh, if they want to. Uh, but there are also people uh, which are, um, yeah, not very fond of uh, command line interface, or they are not using that very often. And if they have to do a, a specific task, but for example, if you see here on the right hand side, you see your environments, and uh, we have a development staging and a, pr and a production environment, and you want to promote, for example, an application. Um, using a UI, and that's something we, we work on as well, which is an add-on, so you can add the add-on to uh, to your Jenkins X environment and uh, be able to uh, to utilize actually the same thing what you can do on the command line, uh, but you, you have a nice UI for being able to promote uh, one environment uh, or your application from one environment to another environment just by a single single click from from the UI. So demo time. Um, so I have uh, prepared a couple of demos. Uh, one thing is uh, creating a cluster with Jenkins X. So that means that we don't have a Kubernetes uh, cluster available. So it it will this means that it will set up the uh, the uh, a Kubernetes cluster in the right way for being able to run Jenkins X within the cluster. Um, what I've done, I can show you the video, uh, but what I've done, I have also, I just created the uh, the cluster this morning. And as you can see here, um, I think you can see it. Uh, but if you can see here, we create a cluster 
it's uh, running on GKE, so the Google uh, Kubernetes service. We setting up a uh, cluster name. We set up also the default admin name, and we also set up uh, the uh, specific uh, Git owner, uh, which is more important. For example, how many number of nodes are you going to use? What is the maximum number of uh, nodes? And what kind of machine type machine type are you going to use? So this means that we we set up uh, uh, or creating a cluster from JX. So what it means, it does, it's going to do a lot. So just behind, just by using this command and forget about some of those uh, um, uh, uh, parameters, uh, you can also just use J, JX create cluster and then it will ask uh, by more kind of a wizard uh, from the command line uh, what, what, what you want to do. So it will ask, for example, what kind of machine type do you want to have? And I've, I've selected, for example, the standard two. Uh, where what, what is the zone, for example, to use? So I've, I've used Europe West one, and as you can see here, it actually gives you uh, it redirects you to a website from Google where you have to approve uh, to be able to uh, to create that cluster from your uh, account, uh, Google account, and that's what I've done. So I said uh, allow, so I allow access uh, for this uh, for this to be able to create that cluster. And as you can see here, there is a lot of stuff going on behind the scene. Um, so it's setting up uh, Helm. Uh, it's setting up uh, Jenkins in the background. It's setting up uh, Nexus. It's setting up the uh, the chart museum, for example. So as you can see here, generating chart template, et cetera, et cetera, based on the parameters we, we gave uh, uh, the command. It will actually set up the whole cluster. So let, let me go a little bit further down. So it creates based on also my uh, parameters. It, it's it, it's it's utilizing in this case in this case the serverless uh, Jenkins. So by using Tecton, that's why you see, for example, Tecton here. That's why why you also see the custom resource definitions creation, uh, like the uh, pipeline runs and pipelines from Tecton. Um, let me see. So it creates a lot of uh, Kubernetes-specific uh, objects inside the cluster. It's um, adding some um, uh, cluster roles, uh, some servers accounts, uh, also services. Um, it's adding values in specific uh, file, YAML files based on the parameters I gave. So it will it will utilize uh, Git repositories where the templates are already stored, and then it will actually change some parameters based on uh, the parameters I've used in the uh, create cluster command. And as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, yeah, uh, Kubernetes uh, objects are created, config maps, there are secrets created, always access control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And here you can see it also creates a repository inside my Git uh, Git repository. So I'm using GitHub in this case uh, online. And uh, as you can see here, uh, after the uh, create cluster has been created, it's actually uh, setting up also some services. Uh, a context is created, there are namespaces created, and within some certain namespaces we have, for example, Nexus. So we have Nexus available already where we can store our artifacts uh, into uh, the next repository. So, but then, again, that will be automatically done by uh, by Jenkins X. Um, but you will see what is already created uh, behind the scenes, and it's also coming back to the beginning. Um, make it simple. This this is all based on best practices. Make it simple for the developer to set up a Kubernetes cluster. As you can see here, there are so many things to take care of. Um, yeah, it's doable with scripting, but as you can see, you have to do a lot of, or you have to take care of a lot of stuff. And uh, Jenkins X is uh, taking taking off your the, the, those burdens from uh, the person who's using it, and uh, be able to uh, to focus on the, on developing the code, developing business value to uh, to the end users. Um, so let me go to the engine. So this is what my cluster is running. So I've got a cluster called JXROX in Amsterdam. The location, as you have seen by create cluster command, uh, it's Europe West 1C. 
And here you see all kinds of uh, pods running inside my uh, Kubernetes cluster, which is called the JX Rocks Amsterdam. Um, so a lot of pods are running, uh, including Jenkins Nexus, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do, because everything is running, and bear, bear with me, I hope uh, this will be uh, will be okay to run. So what I'm going to do, and that's something we could do as a, as a developer, I can say create JX create quick start. And I can give, um, give let's say, the language I want to have. So I can say, okay, just give me the Go language. And I can just kind of with visa style again. I can just about selecting the right uh, organization. So I have here an organization called, let me, I hope you can see it a little bit more so it's better. Um, so I selected the organization within my GitHub repository. I say Jenkins X uh, webinar and I say uh, web demo or webinar. Let's say just go demo. So I'm going to create a go demo repository. It's creating the repository and then it will ask you would you like to initialize git now i say yes i say commit message that's fine and let's see if that's going to work so i'm going to back in my let's see if my there it is updated just now so i've got a go demo and everything is there so i can I can now see, for example, where it is. So I can see my pipeline, for example. So I can just use this. I can see where it is. So it's pending, as you can see here, running. Some some of them are running. But as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. But as a developer, I just uh, create a quick start, which create a, a Go demo. Uh, or go, go language uh, based uh, uh, application, which is an HTTP server, which uh, gives you uh, what is it, uh, kind of a hello world. But um, so let me see what, let me show you what what it provides. So it shows you uh, what that command creates. So it creates because I'm utilizing Tecton, we have a build pack, Go. Uh, we have, uh, for example, we are using scaffold. So we have here a scaffold, so change me. So there are some specific templates we are using. But again, this is all behind the scenes, but of course you are free to change if you want to change it. So we have a standard Docker file, as you can see here from scratch, expose a 80 port the end point is Go demo. And we copy the bin directory into the uh, the Docker image, and that's created by uh, by draft uh, the draft components. Uh, and then we have some Helm charts. So here we have a Go demo, and here we have the uh, Helm chart. So here we have a chart or jaml. Here you can see so an icon and the name and the, what kind of version it is. And here we have the values of this specific. Uh, Go demo application. As you can see here, this is all generated by by the JX uh, create uh, quick start command. So let me see where it is because otherwise we are running out of time. So everything looks like okay. So what I can do, and just want to make sure. So we have created. Uh, so I can say get applications. No applications at this moment. Uh, I can say get. Oh, I have to go to go. Sorry, I just wanted yeah. to say we hit the 10 minute mark, and if you could just yeah. give some time for questions. And if you guys have any questions, please please ask. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. So, if there are any questions uh, before, let me just do the checkout for sure. So. Creating a simple uh, 
and then I say you're welcome. And then I say JX get environment. And as you can see here, it, I will have a staging environment, I have a production environment, and I should get a development environment. So if I go to this one, so this is staging. So that's also good to know. So we created also the GitOps, as I mentioned before. So we created the uh, GitOps uh, or Git repository specifically for the staging environment. And uh, I'm using the Amsterdam uh, environment as a prefix. So that's why you see environment AMS staging. And the same we have for production. So we have separate so we are utilizing infrastructure as code, so GitOps, GitOps to have uh, everything stored inside uh, the Git repository. And here's the demo itself. So there's a my branch, so I can do a pull request, for example. I create a pull request. And now I can, for example, uh, it's pending at the moment. I can have some uh, full style uh, command. So I can, let's say, comment on with meow. And based on that, it should come up with, uh, with a kitty, as you can see here, based on uh, the command I, I sent. And uh, I can also say approve, but I will just check my environment. No. And I say comment, so I approve, and then it will approve my uh, my change. And uh, what I can do, uh, and that's something I didn't talk about, and that's something really also part of uh, Jenkins Hicks, especially for, for example, for web-based development. So how are you able to check your CSS changes or your HTML changes? That's really hard to do, right? So. Um, before you want to you want to fail fast or you want to succeed fast at least, but you want to get feedback as soon as possible. So what you don't want is first promote it to test, for example, and then you see, oh, that CSS you have changed is not correct. So the layout of your website is not correct. And you have to go back again. So what we, what we have done, uh, we also created a preview environment. So what you can do utilizing preview environment is you can actually have the preview environment available for the developer to check those things before it will be approved to promote to, for example, the test environment. So really making sure uh, that your CSS or your HTML changes are correctly uh, propagated into your into your code and you are able to test it uh, beforehand before you promote it to, to the test environment and hand it over to, uh, to somebody else. So with that, um, I think I'm, I have to conclude uh, for leaving up uh, some of the uh, questions. Um, yeah. Um, if there's yeah. any questions. Uh, yeah, there's a, a, a couple of questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so there is a question that says, so can you use Jenkins X on Kubernetes on premise? Yeah, um, good question. So. What we provide, as I mentioned, so we, we, we are supporting Jack 6 for uh, Kubernetes for on all the uh, major cloud providers. So EKS, uh, AKS uh, for Microsoft, EKS from Amazon uh, with AWS, um, uh, Google with GKE, uh, PKS, uh, Red Hat with OpenShift, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the same applies for utilizing Kubernetes or Jack 6 on Kubernetes on premise. So if you have a Kubernetes uh, environment in, within your own data center, uh, we can support that as well. Yeah. Thank you. There's also, so uh, is there a commercial versions of Jenkins X available? Yeah, at the moment, uh, at the moment uh, we have a limited availability. So that means um, as, as you have seen, we are, we are showing you the Jenkins X uh, environment. Um, 
which is the open source uh, version. Uh, we also provide a UI, as I mentioned in the beginning, and we showed you the uh, slide with the UI. That's something we're going to provide in the commercial version uh, of uh, Jenkins X, uh, which will be part of uh, Cowpea's uh, core. So in short, right now it's limited availability and it will be soon available as general available uh, to the public. Uh, so we have indeed uh, then uh, a commercial uh, version of uh, Jenkins 6. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, that, that's it. So um, I'd like to say, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Kojon. I think that was uh, good. Thank you everyone for listening in. Uh, we, we really appreciate it and hope everyone has a, has a great day. Thank you. Thank you.